of hosting this session. So today we will be talking about something very important in the midst of our increased uh, construction activity nationwide, fire protection. And specifically, uh, we'll be talking about one particular facet that Delta Supply Company is hoping to bring more awareness to in terms of your available options locally. Um, you guys are still seeing my screen, correct? Yes, your screen is okay. visible. Yes, All right, yes so our agenda for today, we're going to introduce Firestop and that's relevance to all of us. I'm going to go through a few of the Firestop applications and the relevant solutions, such as cable penetrations, pipe penetrations, joint sealing, HVAC, as well as mixed or combined scenarios. Then I'll talk a little bit about special products, such as cable transits, coatings, structural steel protection. And then I will dip a little bit into codes and regulations. And then hopefully we'll have some time for a question and answer segment. So what is Firestop or Firestop from Hilti? Firestop is a passive protection system. So that differs from active fire protection, which I'm sure is what most of us may be familiar with, but passive fire protection deals with containing fire and isolating it so that it doesn't migrate throughout the building, whether it's the heat, the fire, the smoke, the fumes, and it is rated or defined in how much time it gives for safe evacuation. Now, once installed, um, you would do some mandatory inspection, very little maintenance because the name passive isn't just into how it works, but rather how you will interact with the device or with the solutions that we provide. So let me go a little bit further into clarifying the difference between the two types of fire protection. So active fire protection, that requires some interaction for it to do its work. So whether that's a manual action, such as someone pulling a fire alarm, someone uh, going to get a fire extinguisher and spraying it at the base of the fire, or it can be automatic, but it's still an interaction or a trigger that needs to happen in order for the fire safety to activate. And active fire protection has different categories, such as your fire alarms, uh, your emergency lighting or path lighting, sprinkler systems, your hose reels, um, smoke vents that will evacuate smoke and fumes. And that really is the, the main different, diff difference as well as definition for active versus passive fire protection, where the, the main objective is to prevent the spread. And it doesn't necessarily require any intervention for it to do its work. And we, we, may, we are more than familiar with other forms of passive fire protection that are not fire stops, such as the fire doors uh, that will help contain the spread, uh, fire curtains that are built and designed for larger openings, and even fire and smoke dampeners that help to delay the spread um, and maybe even prevent some movement of fumes. But then compartmentation or fire stopping falls within this category of passive fire protection. Now, passive fire protection gets defined not individually in terms of individual products, but in the result that it will help an assembly or a wall or a floor to achieve. So there are many different ways to define um, that rating. So you can have an F rating, which is simply a rating of how long I can stay somewhere before I get affected by a fire having occurred. Um, and you can also have a T rating, which is how much time does it take before I feel the heat or before that heat transfer or temperature migrates from one section of a building to another. So you, you have other ratings as well, um, an L rating, which is mainly for definition of smoke or air quality. But we don't see that used very much because an F rating and a T rating can encompass that. And a W rating in terms of water tightness because fire stopping can have effects in terms of water and steam movement. Now, now it's important to note that the F rating itself isn't given to an individual product because there is no individual product, whether passive or active, that will give you a particular rating or standard. It's the assembly, the floor or the wall uh, that the fire stock product would work with that gets that rating. So I need to say that because Hilti encourages all people interested in looking further into fire stock that they do not promote or sell the individual products that I'm going to be talking about, but rather it's an entire system 
for the fire performance that you desire. Uh, fire stopping, uh, you can apply it in terms of three main ways to contain fire. Uh, there are chemical solutions that have two main variants. So you can have intermittent material. An intermittent material is any product or chemical solution that it reacts to fire by swelling. So you would apply it to a particular penetration or gap. And when a particular temperature is reached, uh, it will expand. So one unit or one type of product can activate at 215 degrees Fahrenheit, and some can go all the way up to 445 degrees for Fahrenheit. But um, the products are specified based on what you want to achieve, your F rating and your type of compartmentalization. But that's why the details of the F rating that you need and the type of building and where it's being placed, that information is very key to Delta Supply and to Hilti in terms of how we propose the best solution for you. An ablative material, that's the other side of chemical solutions. Ablative material will form a hardened or a charred surface, almost stone-like in texture after consuming a particular amount of heat. So there's a carbonation reaction and that hardened surface will then cover the open opening or the targeted penetration so that you achieve compartmentation within that section of the building. And further to that, there are mechanical solutions. Uh, mechanical solutions, they're very straightforward. Uh, what you see is what you get. So these devices use a combination lightly of chemical, but mainly mechanical systems to arrest or to physically stop movement of heat, fire, smoke, and fumes. Now, the, 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 the use of passive fire protection, it's part of a balanced approach. So I need to also make it clear that passive fire protection products are never intended to replace um, active fire protection products, such as your sprinkler systems and your detectors and other such methods, but it's meant more to complement those items. So it's uh, a three-pronged approach, so similar to a surveyor's tripod, where you need all three legs or prongs working together in order to achieve stability. Um, the passive fire protection is meant to be part of your holistic approach to protection of your building and your assets. And I don't think I need to explain in too much detail how important it is or how worthy the investment of fire protection is. I mean, you can have incidences where you will lose very important um, things that may be tangible or not, such as valuable production time production capacity or irreplaceable information or assets um, or opportunities that you may simply lose and not get again because you are busy reacting or recovering from a fire. So in many cases, that added layer of protection is worth every single penny. Uh, next, I'm going to play a short video for you guys just to help um, identify one scenario where you can see the value of having that extra layer. Let me know if you're hearing. Are you guys hearing? Fire in a hospital it's, is uh, something yeah. we don't like to yeah. think about because of, it's so potentially horrible. We've seen some fires in hospitals really get big because no one thought about fire safety. Key concerns for hospitals are life safety, infection control, patient's privacy, and continued operation after a fire incident. Typically, fire and especially smoke can spread through a building in less than five minutes. Active fire protection alone may not be enough as a prevention. To contain fire and smoke, effective compartmentation is essential and needs to remain in place. Maintenance activities in the hospital can be an incredibly challenging uh, event. We close the hole. And one day later, they made a new hole to put another cable through. And our insurance company is looking at that because if your firewall's not intact, you're putting your whole building at risk. We offer solutions for every need and every application. Our products are designed to meet all major codes and approvals, helping to ensure fast, easy, and correct installation. Our plant operations teams don't need to go through much training. For the owner, it's, uh, the construction time was important. That's also why they decided to use the product. The contract loves it because it's just a hole to put uh, the pipe into. It's easy to install. We don't have to worry about failures. We have zero failures. Our products address many key concerns, such as acoustics, 
and airflow control. My main concern is that we keep the air where it's intended to be so that it doesn't contaminate other areas. And they have also been tested under seismic conditions. We get uh, lots of uh, technical support. If necessary, Hilti comes on site. Our on site support, design software, expert trainings, and the unlimited access to our BIM CAD library will help you find the best possible solution. On top of that, with the Hilti Documentation Manager, all applications are documented and managed in an efficient way. We are your trusted and experienced Firestop partner for projects all over the world. Inspectors see that and they say, okay, I know that that product is fine, so it just makes our lives, you know, a little less stressful. Trust Hilti as your competent Firestop design partner and see how our services can help solve your challenges. Okay. So very interesting stuff. Um, I'm encouraging you guys to write down your questions, whether you have it on the video or anything that I've presented, especially the coming section, because now we're going to get into the meat of it, five stop applications and solutions that we can offer. So types of applications, like I mentioned before, there are cable penetrations, pipe penetrations, HVAC penetrations, mixed and combined penetrations. These are all types of scenarios where you may have to have passage of cables, conduits, pipes, or other accessories for your building moving from section to section. And you want your penetrations to move from section to section, but not the fire or smoke um, in an event of a disaster. So locations or areas where you would need it. So you can see here on this diagram, many different variations uh, that uh, the members of IMAG will, will be familiar with. You may have uh, cable trays, cable coatings, you may have incidences where you have to seal joints. Uh, you may have harsh condition scenarios where you would require a specialized solution like a cable transit, uh, HVAC scenarios, uh, vertical, horizontal penetrations. Uh, many different scenarios that Hilti has designed their solutions for. So let's get into the first one, cable penetrations. Now with cable penetrations, the solutions are geared towards scenarios such as single cables, or if you have bundles that have to work together, conduits that will then funnel cables through them and tubes, or you may have cable trays or in industrial or commercial applications where the cables need to be exposed, but still organized and channeled in a certain way. And you may have multiple large, complex, and very well thought out designed scenarios that you still need to protect. To protect these scenarios, Hilti offers a wide range of solutions. These are just a few. Uh, the FS intermescent sealant is very popular, easy to install, works just like coating or caulking. The FS block, which is a preformed chemical solution, and then you can build and customize it to whatever opening that you need to seal. Uh, fire stop mortar. Uh, I'm pretty sure I don't need to explain the concept of mortar to the people in this room. Um, and it works pretty similarly, where you open, mix, and apply freehand as you need it to cover the area that is in mention. The cable disc, a very simple and popular product because of its size, weight, and flexibility for different type of cable openings. The speed sleeve, you saw that a moment ago in the video, one of the mechanical devices, very popular in medical or health-related or contamination containment scenarios. And the FS plug, uh, also very popular, uh, acts kind of, if any of you have seen me come to your offices and do a presentation, you'll see it can also double as a stress ball. I know that's something very appealing to IMATCH members. And the FS foams and FS cushion. The FS cushion, some people may be very familiar with because I've seen it used previously. Hilti has been doing fire stop products for over 30 years. And this is one of the early ones. And the original is still the best, as they say. As well as cable collars and the FS coating that can be painted, um, injected, or otherwise sprayed. So things that you should consider when approaching or thinking about incorporating fire stop into your projects are the types of cable. So if you're using low voltage uh, data telecoms, or if you are protecting medium or high voltage, because these are the things that Hilti will look at and say, well, do you need a, a system that will help these things do their job outside of a scenario for fire or will it hamper it? 
the type of project? Is it greenfield? Is it something where we can put in brand new stuff in a certain area and leave it alone? Or is it renovations where it will need to fit within an existing structure, existing wall, existing floor, existing partition? The operational needs, uh, do you need the fire stop to facilitate wall opening? Do you need it to facilitate air tightness or water tightness? Does it need to consider exterior weather um, and being exposed to the elements? And repenetration needs. Uh, are you putting fire stop in a scenario where you know, uh, based on the operation of the building, it's going to get damaged and have to be replaced? Uh, is the repenetration occasional or planned? where you know that because of the nature of the building, every year we need to make an adjustment to section A, interacting with section B, and therefore there will be some repenetration needs. This type of information, Hilti is eager to have from you so that we can help, and Delta Supply will guide you through that process as well. So in just to compare the types of scenarios for new cables and conduits, you may see more opportunities for the mechanical and the preformed solutions that Hilti offers. In existing cables, you may want something more flexible, and that would be where you would see more of the cable collars, rectangular or circular. You would see the flexible foam being used. You would see the cable discs. Uh, you, you would think about scenarios where you need to adjust to an already designed building, and you simply have to work with what is there. Whereas in new cables and conduits, you have more or Delta Supply, you the client, and Hilti has more free and to say, look, we can put in this very rigid thing that will give you the best protection, uh, but it may not be more adjustable to, to any redesign or retrofitting that you have to do in the future. And the, the reason for that is that the portfolio logic looks at repenetration and retrofitability in terms of the type of product, because Hilti categorizes the products as commodities or specified, and the commodities are the common products. Those are the products that they can mass manufacture because the scenarios are, they don't vary from time to time. Um, you're talking about a simple two inch gap for an inch and three quarter penetration. You're talking about a regular hole, uh, square or rectangular to allow for a cable trace, things that we can plan that we can predict that aren't so unique. In those scenarios you use pro commodity products, but as you get more specified, you may have particular codes and regulations to apply to, you may have harsh production environments that are exposed to certain conditions that the fire stop solution will also have to withstand. Um, in those scenarios, that's where it gets more specified. And as a result, that means that we need to get into more specified products. But uh, talk to us and we will also help you through those scenarios. Excuse me. Uh, just to highlight two of the products, the fire stop plug and the fire stop block. As I mentioned, these are preformed. They come in particular sizes. The plug comes in two inch and four inch hole diameters. So those are for simple penetrations where you have a few cables or a singular pipe that you simply need to run something through and then seal it back up. And this is an intermescent material, it as well as a plug. So again, this is an item that will take a certain amount of heat at a certain temperature. It will simply carbonate and expand. And then you will be able to have that penetration completely and totally sealed. The fire stop sleeves, uh, very simple, straightforward operation. Uh, you simply twist to open and then you twist again and your penetration is closed. Uh, what you saw in the video earlier was the ease of which a uh, building operator and end user of the product can allow for a cable to be passed through from section to section of the building and then closed again and it is easy to operate, and it's easy to allow for you to adjust whatever cables, penetrations, loops, whatever it is that you need to pass through a section, and you can still maintain containment, uh, both of your existing air, as well as in the case of a disaster, you can compartmentalize your fire, your smoke, your fumes, all of that. So. Now let's move on to pipe penetrations. In pipe penetrations, we have solutions for metal pipes, for pipes with a combustible insulation, for uh, or, or combustible pipes rather, uh, for complex combinations of the two. Solutions are available for whatever penetration that you have to allow for in your building, but you still wish to protect. 
Uh, non-burnable pipes, for example, we may approach with non-burnable insulation um, and then also compile it with a pipe collar or an injectable sealant. So things like the FS bandage, uh, something that you can freehand organize and arrange around a joint or an opening uh, to give you the required protection. The cast in place device that is also preformed, factory made, and allows you to simply drop it in place and then allow for further conduits or penetrations to pass through it. Uh, the previously mentioned intermittent sealant, the FS coating, the collars, the FS wraps, uh, go a little bit more into them in the future, but these are pre-made chemical solutions uh, that you can organize in a circumference and protect your penetrations um, when moving from sec to section, section to section. So uh, similar to cable penetrations and pipe penetrations, some factors to consider. What are you penetrating through? Are you going through concrete? Are you going through steel plate? Are you going through alloy steel or drywall? Uh, what is the size of your opening? Is it for a singular penetration, an array of them? Are you making a larger gap because you cannot define um, the number of penetrants or penetrations and then you would want to seal that up? Is your pipe itself also insulated or have any special material that the fire stop solution will have to consider? That is information that Hilti loves to see so that we, again, we can help you find the best fit. So the cast in place items fall under the premium category because they are preformed, manufactured in factory. You have Hilti's uh, very robust quality assurance backing you. And if you move up through the different types of scenarios, just going back over the portfolio logic or how Hilti has arranged their solutions in um, the more simple or predefined scenarios. You would have the traditional products such as the wrap, the collars, the bandages, and then in the more premium situ situations, you have a premium solution. Uh, in sprinklers, we do offer a solution that can help to fire protect your sprinkler network, your piping network, as well as the heads themselves and it will not stop them from activating and doing their active fire protection work. The collars, just to explain a little bit more about them, uh, they come in variants based on the size of penetrant that you need to protect. So there is an option for one and a half inch to six inch pipe, and there is an option for larger pipes. And that's because the chemical composition in order for it to maintain its rigidity and still activate at the required temperature is different. So in essence, it is the chemical solution similar to the foam and the strip, but it is embedded in an aluminum collar. And then there are links or hooks that would be used to seal it or maintain its circumference or hold around your penetration. And that's it. It's easy to install, easy to anchor right out of the package. Uh, it can be used in horizontal or in vertical applications. And it's pretty much a wrap strip inside a metal collar. The wrap strips now, uh, in two variants. They are pre-cut or pre-measured. So you would simply define what size pipe it is, how many of them you want to protect, and you would order whatever size or length of pipe strip is necessary to wrap around that pipe. And then there's the endless strip, the one that you would cut to size because you may have odd pipe sizes or accessories on your pipes that you also want to protect. And here you have free reign to cut to the length um, that is required for you to get your complete circumference and overlap and achieve the compartmentalization for your pipe penetrant. FS1, I must mention this because it is the most popular fire stop product to date. It is the most commonly used and proposed. In 95% of fire stop penetration scenarios, the FS1 max is recommended and therefore it comes in many different variants. So it can be used as a plastic cylinder or tube by itself foil packs or sausages that you can use inside your own caulking equipment and in five gallon buckets where it can be mixed, painted, sprayed, uh, has multiple, multiple applications. You can even paint over it. Uh, it uh, only allows for 5% movement. So when it is cured, you don't have to worry about it flexing and flaking and bending all over the place. And the intermescence works very well. It expands up to three or five times its original volume, depending on the layering or thickness that you have applied. Usable for metal pipes, usable for plastic pipes, gypsum, drywall, masonry, concrete, what have you. 
just to show you examples of the cast in place devices. Uh, there are variants for your metal decks. So those of you doing industrial or commercial construction with your type B sheeting for casting concrete slabs, we have a solution for you. As well as those using traditional plywood, there is a solution for that as well. And it is simply dropped in place, anchored securely, not too complex. And then you walk away and pour and get back to work. Now in mixed and HVAC scenarios, what we are talking about is where you will have mixed small openings as well as mixed large openings. Uh, for your ducting, um, you may have scenarios where you would have to use some type of blank seal or dampening. Um, and you may also have scenarios that are complex or combined situations rather that may be temporary where um, it is need necessary to fire stop or fire seal an area. Uh, but you know, for example, that it, it will have to get removed and then replaced at some point in time. And in these scenarios, again, Hilti has you covered with multiple options, whether it's a flexible foam, the fire stock cushions that can be applied horizontally or vertically. There is also the coated board or fiber boards that can be pre-shaped or predetermined sizes, just like when you're ordering window sizes, you can order predetermined mortar, mortar board or coated board sizes for your openings, and then you would simply cut through them, seal them with the FS1 Max or a flexible foam and get back to business. In HVAC penetration scenarios, we may have to consult with your duct or your HVAC system manufacturer because they may insist on the use of a damper in terms of making sure that the insulation system is still validated and you achieve the fire stop compartmentalization. And with the ducting, uh, sprays are available, uh, sealants that are injectable, as well as the flexible foams, also an application solution for your ducts. Uh, pretty much a uh, similar scenario to your cable and pipe penetrations. The information helps and helps you get the right fit. So you're looking at the opening size. Is it vertical? Is it horizontal in orientation? How many penetrants? Uh, how many uh, occasions do you foresee where you will have to repenetrate? If any, that type of information is key. So the portfolio logic in terms of mixed and HVAC, we look at it the way you could look at Italian sports cars. So when you have basic scenarios, uh, we propose the basic product. Uh, no need to go all the way up to the top tier. If you have more traditional, but not so basic scenarios, that's where we may propose a mix of products. For example, the foam may be a rectangular color and then finished with a fire stop cushion, and then a premium solution, there may be a particularly prescribed Ferrari of fire stop. Uh, the fire stop blocks may be mixed with mortar and the FS1 or other mixable, paintable, flexible fire stop solution. Joints. Now joints are a particular uh, proficiency for Hilti because it's something that is very popular in terms of renovations. So you may be sealing joints that are wall to wall. You may be sealing the top of the wall in concrete and masonry or the bottom of the wall in concrete and masonry. You may have unique situations where a uh, metal fluted deck, again, tight B sheeting going towards an edge in between whether it's glass or more concrete, uh, but Hilti has that solution covered. We can offer you a solution that will give you the HVAC sealing that you need as well as the fire protection. And you may also have a unique scenario where you have a curtain wall design, uh, multiple, multiple levels covered by a sheet of fancy looking glass. And you have a particular edge of slab sealant requirement. Hilti has also done a lot of research into these scenarios and has designed and produced products that are perfectly suited for sealing those uh, openings. The preformed solutions in terms of edge of slab I just want to highlight that first because that's a unique scenario that Hilti is specifically experienced in solving because we do preform solutions of varying sizes depending on your curtain wall design. So those with glass facades or other facades and there's always this slight gap right at the edge. You might see some water leaking in a heavy storm like we experienced the other day. You may see some leakage of your conditioned air um, and that affects your your energy efficiency. Hilti has looked at these problems and has taken uh, the robust step in trying to solve those headaches for contractors. And in regular sealant scenarios, such as the wall 
uh, connections that were previously mentioned. Many different options. A popular one is CP606 because this gives you the benefit of an internal envelope seal where you can contain the smoke and fumes and you get some of the fire protection, not the same as other specifically rated fire protection sealant products, but it still gives you protection from the smoke and fumes. And I mentioned that because the research has shown that in many cases, the fire or the heat doesn't cause as much death or injury as the smoke and the toxic fumes. Uh, that type of smoke inhalation is what you want to take extra care to protect against. And these products are suited just for that. The acrylic sealant that I mentioned comes in varying options, the foil packages, the cartridge tubes, and the paintable buckets. It is acrylic based. So we know that the drywall scenarios or your masonry scenarios, you may have need for some flex, uh, just like you would have construction joints. So the CP606 fixes all of that, allowing for up to 33% movement. Uh, there are some versions that are paintable, some that are not. So again, I encourage you to speak to us early so that we can figure out what's best for you, both for the project as well as for the pocket as well. I won't spend too much time on this because it's a companion to the preformed sections that I mentioned before, but this is one example of a sprayable uh, fire stop solution because this is something that you would simply order in the buckets and you would hook up your airless sprayer. And in conjunction with the preformed sections, you want to make sure that all of those smaller gaps or flexes that a preformed rigid selection can't completely and totally cover, uh, this sprayable flexible sealant uh, can help you still achieve your compartmentalization. So now we're going into specialized solutions. Uh, and these are specialized solutions for commercial or industrial buildings. Fire stop needs for commercial and residential buildings, we can address them with the typical solutions. But there are situations where you may need additional benefits, such as rain resistance, smoke tightness, thermal insulation, and seismic resistance because your, your, your building has to meet a certain code or regulation by the operation or the type of work that this building is meant to do. And in those scenarios, you may need uh, specialized situations that fall outside the typical range, um, outside the range of the commercial mid-market. So uh, these solutions you would see in the building, hospitals, schools, or shopping center solutions. However, the cable transit. This is a product that is specially suited for your energy and industry scenarios. So if you're talking about petroleum factories, if you are, or refineries, if you're talking about um, petroleum or harsher chemical storage facilities, if you are a power producer, if you are an energy producer, if you are a industrial fleet management or shipbuilding or dry dock facility, uh, pharmaceutical, uh, facilities, offshore oil and gas, wind turbine areas. These are scenarios where you will need uh, not just the regular additional benefits, but you need certification for hazardous areas, for concussive blast resistance, for electromagnetic protection, grounding, and even rodent resistance, because you know that um, any effects that uh, the four-legged furry friends have on the cables can affect an entire plant. And that's something that you want to protect against. So in those scenarios, the cable transit is very specific and therefore rarely requested, but it is still highly recommended um, in terms of how it can fix a unique scenario. So okay. this is something that is highly recommended uh, to speak about early in your project design, how it works. It is a fixed rectangular section that allows for different modules or different sizes in penetration to come through. And then you would simply size it or adapt it to your unique scenario and use it with anchoring plates, adapters to make sure that you have all the gaps filled and you would make sure that it is wedged and, and allows for whatever information or holes rather um, based on the information you provide. All right. Um, Mr. Laidlaw, the time, yeah. seeing that we have two presenters today. Oh, uh, is okay. running a little bit short. I just want everybody here to know that Mr. Laidlaw, he he's very well knowledgeable of all these products of Hilti. Anyone here can 
reach out to him, can visit Delta Supply, can use these hosts of products in the implementation and pricing of your projects. Mr. Laidlaw holds a Bachelor in Engineering Construction Management from the University of Technology and also a Master's of Science in Infrastructure Engineering and Management from the University of Surrey in the UK. So we have a very knowledgeable presenter and um, it is not our choice to have to cut the presentation However, based on the, um, the the two presenters and the time for the Lunch and Learn series, we will have to ask the individuals here to reach out to you in person. Sure. Ghana, all the other information. Is it that you can, I mean, the question and answer period, um, because of how interesting the presentation is, the time has passed, but could you share a telephone number? Sure. With the, with, with, the, with the guests that we have here that they could reach out to you in person? Sure. So you can contact us at 302. Wait, let me make sure that I'm earning all of my salary today. Yes, you can reach out to us at 302-6111 all the way up to four. So that would be 302 611 one, two, one, three, one, four, so forth. And you can also send us an email at sales at deltasupplyco.com. And that email address gets to everyone, including myself, uh, that is also well-trained and versed on the Firestar products. So you send us your requests, your basic information on project, and we'll be happy to speak to you further. All right. Well, we, on behalf of the master builders, would just love to thank you very much for your time. Sure. In presenting and preparing for disaster is something that we all need to try our best to be prepared for. So the information is noted and um, we know that you're reachable. So thank, thank you very much. You. Yes. And at this time, we're going to have to present our second uh, presenter. I'll, I'll announce him. His name is Mr. Gary Walters. Are you there, Mr. Walters? Yes. Oh, it's Gary's time I was eating up? Oh, I don't feel so bad. All right. <laughs> All right. Mr. Gary Walters is the chairman of the Credentials Committee of the Professional Engineers Registration Board and a senior project, man project manager with the National Water Commission. With 18 years of experience, we would like to now listen to the presentation of Mr. Gary Walters. The floor is yours, Mr. Walters. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we got so much information on fire, and now I'm here to out the fire. Uh, will you allow me to share my screen? Yes. Okay, great. All right, um, I will assume everybody is seeing my screen and there's no issue. Yes, we're seeing it clearly. Thank you. So the, the Professional Engineers Registration Board um, gets its authority from the Professional Engineers Registration Act. And this is, and the accompanying regulations, of course. And for you to become a registered engineer in Jamaica, the, there are a number of requirements. Of course, um, a national of Jamaica or a CARICOM state, and you must also be ordinary resident in Jamaica. Um, good character, you must hold a engineering degree, uh, which we will speak to further. And you must also demonstrate that you have practical experience uh, being an engineer 
uh, and I'm talking to the master builders in particular, but your experience um, can't only be on the construction side. Uh, you must demonstrate competence in doing engineering designs as well. All right. Um, and as you speak about experience, uh, and, and I'm going to try and go through uh, quickly because I know the time is 1 15, I believe, in the end. So you must have at least two years of, of creative engineering work. And, um, and that is involved with actually doing the, the design. So whether you're civil or you're doing buildings or bridges or water supply systems or whatever, electrical, um, for supply, for whether for commercial or residential, um, chemical processing, uh, but the practical experience, it's 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 what we are looking for, uh, and it and as well you must have at least one year experience in Jamaica or another Caricom state. So as I said, it's a uh, um, the experience that we're looking for um, goes beyond doing research papers. It, it's practical experience, the type of work that would go before uh, the municipal corporation or the National Environment and Planning Agency or the National Works Agency or the NWC. These are these are for for like you are master builders, these are works designed by an engineer for for construction by others. So it's the same type of um, practical designs that you would have gotten, that you would have been done as a contractor uh, and priced. Now, the professional experience also includes design, specification, and our supervision of the implementation of engineering projects, preparing plant layers, performing economic balances. And this is where some of you contractors may have certainly sufficient experience in terms of implementing engineering projects. Um, it also includes development and improvement of processes, uh, which I was talking to about um, the chemical engineers and therefore and mechanical. And research is not totally omitted, but it can't be the end all and be all. Um, and writing technical materials. This is all in support of your application. So what, what we're really looking for is um, experience uh, throughout all the different layers of engineering. Um, some of the other experiences that um, are considered consulting, appraising, evaluating, and working on patent laws. Um, so appraising and evaluating, you may be asked to do a structural report or um, investigating um, um, some other engineering problem. Um, yes, operations is also included, those who have worked um, in the manufacturing, production, um, that experience um, is also considered. But I, I cannot say it enough, most of it is weighted on the design side. Um, so yes, and selecting technical procedures for use in problem solving and developing new approaches and methods when necessary. Now, the accredited programs. And um, Caribbean Maritime University is there first because I guess it's alphabetical order. And this program um, is the most recent engineering program in Jamaica 
And as you would expect, it did take some time to get required accreditation. It's a Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Systems and it's accredited by the University Council of Jamaica. The, this program has been quite a bit controversial uh, because the name does not, some people think it's an industrial engineering program um, and it, 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 it has some components of industrial engineering, but it seems to straddle between industrial, electrical and mechanical. Uh, kind of gearing you for like you know uh, a maintenance or operations engineer, um, but it is it is now accredited since two thousand and thirteen. The University of Technology um, it has received institutional accreditation since two thousand and eighteen. Um, so what that means is that all the programs offered there are accredited. Um, however. Prior to that, they have had accredited programs, uh, not only by the UCJ, but overseas, um, ABET um, in the United Kingdom um, and the US for a number of years. Because their, their engineering degree programs started um, in the late 1990s. And uh, you have the Bachelor of Engineering in Electrical, Bachelor of Engineering in Mechanical, Bachelor of Engineering in Chemical. And so the Electrical and Mechanical were, were some of the first. So you see their, their um, accreditation um, being much earlier. If, if you, um, but the Civil and the Industrial came on much later. And you can see they have the, the latest accreditation, 2015 and 2000, yeah, to July 2015. But the mechanical, electrical, and the chemical were early out the blocks. University of Western is Mona has long since had um, institutional accreditation and all their courses. But note that the Mona engineering program started um, in the 2000s. So they don't have the history uh, like University of Technology. Um, so it took, it, you see that you'll notice that their accreditation came in 2012. So they, and, and, if you look at their program, they tend not to compete directly with the St. Augustine programs. So they have a Bachelor of Science in Biomedical Engineering, Electronics Engineering, Electrical Power Engineering, and Civil. So the St. Augustine, um, which were for many years was the only one that offered a Bachelor of Science in the Caribbean, uh, they have chemical and process engineering, petroleum and geoscience, civil engineering, civil with environmental engineering, electrical with computer engineering, uh, geomatics, land management, industrial engineering, mechanical engineering, mechanical engineering with biosystems, and, and, and so forth. I don't know why I don't see agricultural engineering on the list, but I'm pretty sure that um, the agricultural program at St. Augustine is also um, accredited. So um, an application form should be completed and a proposal in good standing. Now your proposal, um, some years ago, the proposal could be just be a registered engineer. It was changed that a proposal must be in the same discipline uh, as the person that is applying as the applicant. Uh, the proposal, in a sense, is vouching, is the first step in the process to vouch for your character. And, um, and in addition to a proposal, uh, Joseph of the Peace 
is also required to sign. Passport picture verified by address of the piece. Your curriculum vitae must be initialed by your proposer. Um, and you've had instances where proposers uh, know the applicant for some of the items on the CV. Some of it they may not know. Some proposers have a reluctant to sign on areas where they um, are not fully sure on. So what we, we have allowed some leeway is that if another professional engineer can verify the works that you have said you've done. So you so in addition to your proposal, you can have another PE signing off on areas where your proposal um, is a little unsure. Of course, an organizational chart and copies of your academic qualifications. And you can get further information from that website listing. So here's a flow chart. Um, so, wow. Yes. Here's a flow chart. And uh, the, the so there is an application three and the application is reviewed by a registrar before it gets to the credential committee. Um, normally, this is just to make sure that the application is complete and has the required documents. Um, if so, there is also a test. I don't know why this keep going forward. Can I stop it? Pause, yes. Um, and the test is on the Professional Engineers Registration Act and the code of conduct. And this is this is this was the first process of the Professional Engineers Registration Board. Um, advance in the application process, similar to what you might find in other countries where you have um, an, an academic um, competence test. But for now, we do it just on your understanding and familiarity with the code of conduct and the act. And once you successfully pass these tests, which are multiple choice, so that should be quite easy for most of you, and then your application is passed in the Credentials Committee, and the Credentials Committee will make a recommendation to the board. And we have four classes of registration. We have the professional engineer, um, we have special registration, temporary registration, and authorized organization. Professional engineer is what most people who are Jamaican will qualify for. Special registration is persons who, because of the nature of their job, uh, they will require registration. So that may be the city engineer, the chief engineer at the National Works Agency, um, and so forth. So what it means is that um, their registration is, is afforded to them because of the job that they hold. The temporary registration is for those who are non-residents and will be here in Jamaica carrying out an assignment for a specific period. So these might be overseas consultants that might be here um, for six months or a year and they get a temporary registration. Authorized organizations apply to some of you who, members of the master builders, who choose to get registered, and I will, I will explain that further shortly. Herb has 46 categories of engineering discipline, but we're in the process of, I should have mentioned earlier, the special registration, we, we may see some changes to that, in uh, upcoming amendments to the law. Um, and the reason for this is that the, the days when someone may very well end up 
as the city engineer or the chief engineer of a um, government entity and not have the required academic qualification or experience are probably long gone. So special registration probably will only remain for like university lecturers and, uh, and so forth, which it currently applies to as well, but uh, not, not so for those who because of the nature of their job. Um, so the, 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 the grandfather period will have ended. So we have 46 categories and um, we're going to bring them down and I say no more. You can see, obviously, when you see the list. Um, so these, and the number in bracket gives you an idea as to um, when they came about. So civil, one, chemical, two, electrical, three, yeah, mechanical, structural. And after those um, initial um, 15, um, we added some more. The marine one has been a challenge because there's been, over the years, we see there's been a misinterpretation of what is marine engineering. And these now are the additional ones. Construction, software, robotics, mechatronics, project management. And that's it. Those that will be eliminated, you can figure them out for yourself. They're quite obvious. And it carries us to that. That's 31. Yeah. No, more. Yes. Um, engineering physics. Nice. Uh, right down to telecommunications at 46. Now, the authorized organization, which um, applies to some of you at the master builders, it, it allows an organization to conduct engineering work and shall engage in engineering work unless there's a valid certificate of authorizing issued pursuant to subsection two. And this is coming from the um, the act. So it's clause 16, no organization shall engage in engineering work unless it has a valid certificate of authorization. To be registered an organization must be duly incorporated with the companies of Jamaica, I submit articles and certificate of incorporation. And you must demonstrate that you have a registered engineer in each category for which your organization is seeking authorization. The registered engineer must be in good standing with parents, meaning that they must be updated to their fees. And you can get more on the per website. You can also download the form, complete the application form, and return the completed form, pay the application bill, and a certificate grant for each year. Let me speak more on the organizations. And you may say, why would an organization uh, need this? I would say this, if you are a member of the Master Builders, and, and for those of you who are familiar with FIDIC, the FIDIC Red Book says it's for works designed by the employer. So if you are consistently working with the FIDIC Red Book, you probably don't need to be registered because in those instances, the work is designed by others. You get a completed set of works that were designed by others and you construct. Those involved with the other aspects of the book, design and build, engineer, procure and construct, this may apply to you. So those of you who offer design build solutions, you ought to be duly registered. Um, so that is where you may have that. They, because for, for um, government contracts, you have to be registered with a public procurement commission. Right. There's no requirement for construction that you must be required uh, with PERM, but you, you may choose to. But if you, intend to do any part of the design, you would have to be registered. 
and you can get registered in this um in this in the categories primarily that first 15 uh that as I showed you earlier. You we have a list of our registered engineers on our database, which you can search on our website. And that brings me to the end. Did I make a good time? No, five minutes over. <laughs> Well, actually, you're within the time, sir, because we started yes. late. Yes, yes. You, you, you were at a disadvantage. But just yes. to note, just to note, Mr. Gary Walters, who is a BSc in civil engineering from the University of West Indies, St. Augustine, and a master's in business administration of, of, from the University of Manchester, Manchester Business School, and is also registered as a professional engineer in Jamaica. So just note that you have been given information by some of Jamaica's top engineers and anyone who needs to reach Mr. Walters, that number just came up before I mentioned it. Is it still being shared? They can find me, don't worry. Okay. All yeah. right. So on behalf of Master Builders, we just want to thank you. Is there any questions there from is, anybody? Yes, there is, Mr. Reed. Uh, someone is asking, is there a statute of limitations regarding the information, project experience supplied in the application? And they're asking, if, for example, if their design experience before 2012, which is over 10 years ago, would it be acceptable to firm? You remember that? You remember that? Um, I don't know if you want to call it a nursery rhyme, but <laughs> good education will yeah, never decay. Yeah, yeah. What, what, what we will say? Um, if you have the appropriate experience, and maybe in the last five years you are not doing, maybe you are, um, I don't know, dancing with the stars or something. Um, it doesn't my roles have changed over the years of my engineering career, Gary. So, so that's what I'm more curious about. <laughs> no, um, if you demonstrate appropriate um, competence through those years, not with sign that you may not have been practicing um, in the more recent time, your application, um, if you have the, the years, uh, it should be considered favorably. So I won't say it expires. No, no, no. Not a good education. Was there another question? Okay, great. That's it. I don't say another. All right. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Walters. And Laidlaw. And to Mr. Courtney Layla. Yes, Thank and to Delta much. Supply for being our sponsor for this webinar series today. Thank you very much for having me. And um, I'll only apologize to Gary for eating all the time, or maybe I shouldn't. <laughs> He's a generous friend of mine, so he doesn't mind too much. The only thing I would say, it said a lunch, and, and I didn't get any lunch. So I said, <laughs> you owe me lunch. <laughs> Gary, you know where to find me. Thank you, gentlemen. All right. Thank you, Thank you everybody. Have a good afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your days. Thank all you, right. and the very same to you all. Thank you, participants, for joining us. And we're going to Thank end. Thank you. Bye now. Okay.